welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Hello my duckies, and this time we'll be having a look at... The DLC for Bloodborne, The Old Hunters. Phew. This game is fantastic. If I'm not mistaken, at least on Curtain Quickies, this is the first time I've spoken about DLC before as its own fully fledged release. Hey, but if you're familiar with Souls game DLC, you will know that they're usually some of the best bits of the entire game. And if not, then they're just a great extension to the main game. And this game is no exception. But let's talk about it in a bit more detail, alright? <laughs> Oh wow, this is some brilliant additional content to an already brilliant game. And I know it took me a long time to get around to it, but I'm so glad I finally did it. The Old Hunters, I would say, was better than the main game at all, since it doesn't do absolutely everything perfectly, nor that amazingly interestingly. But for what it adds to the main game and just the gameplay and lore within it, it's absolutely essential and one of the best DLC packs I've ever played. And that's what this is, an extension, not a total overhaul. To start off with, this looks absolutely phenomenal and features some of the craziest architecture and grotesque imagery in Bloodborne overall. And the way it's all conceived as a literal nightmare realm where the hunters who are too blood hungry, insane, or dangerous are left to rot is a very cool idea, leading to some very interesting story implications that made even more interesting with every boss encounter being some of the absolute most important characters and elements of the original story. And to see what happened to these characters regarded and discussed so highly in the original game and have the chance to fight them in this hellish nightmare of their own making I found utterly enthralling and oftentimes depressing. Even though the visual detail is incredible though and I understand the point of the DLC is to find out about a particular secret that nobody knows about apart from those hiding it and your goal is to simply go through every barricade to reach it at the end, this does slightly impact the level design and makes it stick out against the original game itself. The research hall is the highlight of the non-linear mind fucking and ingeniously concocted and terrifying level design but every other new location usually is a straight shot with no real deviations from the path save from shortcuts. Again with the plot of the DLC and its themes this all makes perfect sense as you delve deeper into the same nightmare to uncover a single secret but it's still kind of a shame how the level design doesn't incorporate a tiny bit more to match the insane visual detail. That's a small issue compared to everything else the game has going for it though, such as the new two-in-one trick weapons which are unbelievably imaginative badass as fuck feel fantastic to use and a joy with any playthrough you choose to try out. The same with new items and such and again using them within the main game creates new dynamics and challenges never before seen all because of the deep mechanics and thought gone into the weapons. Gameplay from start to end, like I said, is an extension, not a change or a revolution. It's the same old impeccable timing based aggressive gameplay with no shields and mastery of dodging and visceral attacks being a necessity with the odd exploration and secrets element thrown in for good measure. And with this game you are literally kicked in the genitals straight away with the fact that main enemies are hunter NPC style enemies from the main game, yet with the ability to respawn after every lantern and the barely drop any blood echoes for your leveling or shops at all. It's such a stark contrast and difficulty curve from the main game that oftentimes I prefer to call the old hunters the old cunt, especially from the fact that you have to access the DLC from a pretty early point in the main game that I personally would never recommend you going straight in for, especially on New Game Plus like I did. And the difficulty never really holds up, it does get slightly easier after passing that horrific respawning hunter hurdle, but it's safe to say that this is some of the hardest DLC I've ever experienced in a video game. Which does appear pretty unfair to start with, especially with the pathetic echo drops from the beginning hunters, but the way the initial hurdle lets you realise exactly what this DLC will be like, only to then reward you with slightly easier challenges as you go on, fucks with your expectations, keeps you on your toes and anxious constantly makes you feel insane gratification even more so than the main game and definitely keep you prepped up for the boss encounters. And how do I even begin to talk about the bosses? Good fucking god, no exaggeration, apart from maybe the living failures, every single one has challenges never before seen in the main game. Insane amounts of difficult reaction based gameplay, incredible designs, memorable introductions that further make you question lore and characters from the main game and that are probably better than most of the bosses from the main game overall. And my god they are hard, easily the hardest in the whole game and all with their own incredible battles that play totally differently and uniquely to their own right. Especially with the major characters to the main game such as Lawrence, Ludwig, Maria and holy shit the orphan of cars. I was lucky enough to beat this fucker on my third go on New Game Plus but damn it all if I wasn't shaking I wanted to throw my controller at the TV from the intense battle thrown before me. One of the best and hardest battles I've ever experienced in my life. An emotional and soul crushing ending to the DLC and to wrap up questions left unanswered in the main game, also while being so fucking hard. This guy hits like a tank, moves like a grasshopper, looks like fucking German, delays and winds attacks in such unnatural ways, never leaves you windows to heal, hits a second form of just pure goddamn flying insanity, and by the way, he attacks you with a placenta! Just epic, I have no other words. The cherry on the cake is the fact that the existence of the DLC even creates new challenges and new NPC encounters ready for you in the main game to make a replay more interesting and of course to add more depth to the lore. But I will say though, I highly recommend that either on New Game or New Game Plus, especially, you at least to make your way to Rom or a new game plus like I did, the one reborn in the main game and kill them for the extra leveling up. Because if you come into the Hunter's Nightmare even slightly underleveled, you will be utterly punished unless you're the best player ever. I don't know, take my advice or not, I'm not your fucking mother. <laughs> And so I can confidently give this DLC a 9 out of 10. Along with everything else I've been talking about, it's also fantastically priced. You get a lot of content for your money. I mean, I got an extra 10 hours out of this game myself. And it's just great. If you're a Bloodborne fan, it's a must-have. Go and get it now. Cue. Ay, 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 ay.